Hi, I'm Reverend Rick Brown from St. James United Church in Waterdown, and I'm here today with my friend Kathleen Hiltschi, uh, who is a former teacher with a master's in education in conflict and is experienced in dealing with children, in, in dealing with anxiety and stress uh, in school, particularly around bullying. And we're going to have a little chat today about how to deal with your children uh, and the coronavirus as, as we're uh, stuck at home with kids today. So uh, thanks, Kathleen, for having a chat with me today. Hey, you're uh, welcome. My schedule is pretty full. Or <laughs> empty, I shouldn't say. So um, one of the things that uh, has come up in my conversations is how do you talk to your kids about the coronavirus, about COVID-19, when the kids are now stuck at home and schools are closed? What's the best way to talk to kids about it? Yeah, so I think we need to stay calm in those conversations and tempered. Um, but I think we also need to be really honest about what's going on. So depending on the age of your child, you might have very short sentences. So I've got a four and a half year old who can comprehend where my two year olds, they don't really understand what's happening. But I would say around, you know, late threes, early fours, you could have a short little, you know, we've had a, there's a flu going on and so we need to stay home to, to protect everyone. And isn't that nice? You don't have to go to school. Yes. And then you move on with your day where if your child's a little bit older, you can be talking about why we're staying at home to protect people and who yes. the vulnerable populations are. Yes. Um, but then also talk about how resilient Canadians are being and how kind we're being with one another to yes. protect each other from this potential virus. Now, what do you mean by how resilient Canadians are being? Well, I mean, if we look at how governments are responding internationally, yes. Canada has got us home a lot sooner than a lot of countries have. Yes. We put more restrictions on Canadians than most places in the world. Yes. And and the result of that is going to be fewer cases all at the same time, which right. is going to ensure that more people can be treated in hospitals. Excellent. So that's a real resilient, positive, kind response that we yeah. can point out to our kids. And I just want to point out that, uh, as I'm trying to do with all my videos, we're shooting outdoors because it's safer outdoors and we're modeling some good social distancing uh, uh, as well. But uh, take the time to get outside, don't stay in front of the TV. So the next, speaking of the TV, the next thing I wanted to raise is, is uh, why is it helpful and healthy to shield children from too much exposure to media or social media? Okay, yeah, we need to shield ourselves from too much social yeah. media and media. So the first thing I want to share, I mean, you know that I struggle with PTSD and one yeah. of my triggers is health. So this yeah. has been something I've been really focused on for my own anxiety during a time that's a little bit scarier in, in our world. Yeah. So what I've done and maybe some of the people watching can also do I will only read articles that come from doctors or large organizations like Health Canada or the World Health Organization. So Excellent. I want the most up-to-date scientific information telling me what I need to do. Right. If I hear a rumor that's scary, I will go onto CBC or you can go onto whatever site you love, I scan the headlines. If it's not in the headlines, it's probably just a rumor. I also have limited my social media because people are posting tons of stuff. Now I notice for myself, when people start digging into the like what ifs or if this ha kind of down the road thinking, yeah. I see my own anxiety going up and I know to shut it off because I've got this mental health issue that has made me really attuned to my anxiety. Right. So for those of you know, for those people out there that don't have that attunement to their anxiety, know all that information is stressing you out. Yes. So that's the first thing. Yes. Then imagine a young brain who can't make sense of this and we can't make sense of this information. So imagine like a young brain that is confused yeah. about what's occurring yeah. could just escalate their anxiety hugely. So be mindful of things like not having the TV on all day with a bunch of images or messages that are scary, yeah. not only for your child, but also for yourself. Indeed, indeed. So parents, when you're at home with your kids, turn the TV off. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, I've made, if you want to watch the news, turn for the example, news off, that is. Yeah. watch it once a day. Yeah, yeah. And then, and and then, then just turn disconnect. it off. If yeah. you want to read the news, read it once a day and then disconnect, which is hard because I think a lot of us love 
getting information quickly and we're yeah. feeling nervous, yeah. but it's actually not calming people down, it's escalating them. It's escalating. Okay. And the, the final question that I wanted to wrestle with with you is, um, uh, it's natural for some children in hearing about the virus to fear what might happen mm -hmm. if their parents get sick. And, and and I wanted to talk about why it's important to honor that fear and not pretend it's not real, not dismiss it, um, but how to help parents respond when their kids say, Mommy, Daddy, what happens if you get sick? Yeah, okay, so the, the first thing, and I say this to all of the parents of all my clients, regardless of what the issue is, okay. let your child have their feeling. Indeed. So if they're anxious, just say back what they're saying. You're really afraid that I might die. Yeah. And that will decrease their anxiety, first of all, if you yeah. let them feel. Yeah. The second thing is, I want you to talk about, again, the resilience of our system yeah. and why we're social distancing. Yeah. But then also talk about the truth that, you know, most of us in our 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s have a very low likelihood of dying. So knowing that fact might actually calm our kids. Yeah. If maybe, you know, you are the kind of person that has diabetes or some immune issue, and so there is a, a higher chance that you might die. One thing that we had kind of talked about as a really, I think, beautiful solution is to tell them what the plan is should you A, get sick and have yeah. to go to the hospital, yeah. or B, if you did die, who yeah. are the people that are going to take care of them yeah. so that they can feel, they can know what the plan of action is. I know my parents shared that with me growing up, and it was quite calming to know that these people that I loved, totally, if this terrible thing had happened, I could actually, I had a space to go and live. So if something goes wrong, grandma and grandpa will look after you, or aunt and uncle yeah. so-and-so will look after you, or this friend is already in place to look after you. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't want to deny that fear in our children. If if uh, if they feel it, and you say, "Oh no, no, everything's going to be fine," and then you get sick, then then they don't trust you because yeah. you've said one thing and the opposite has happened. So well, and they might also not trust you because they know there is a chance you might get yeah. sick. So yeah. so you're already betraying their trust. Yeah. So honor the fear and give them encouraging truth and, and let them know what the plan is for worst case scenario. Yeah. 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 Kathleen, thanks for your time today. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, I'll put a link below to Kathleen's website uh, if you want to follow up with her more. Uh, take care, God bless, and have a good day. Bye.